Good day. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Douglas Harder, and in this topic, we're going to look at the Hook Jeeves method for finding extrema in n dimensions. Specifically, we're actually going to be looking for minima in n dimensions. So, in this topic, we will begin by describing the idea of exploring surrounding points for an initial approximation of the minimum. We will then use this exploration to indicate a direction in which to move. So consequently, we will be describing the hook Jeeves method for finding a minimum. However, we will then discuss using this exploratory move and then followed by a pattern move approach for solving problems in general. We'll look at an implementation for finding a local minimum of a real valued function of a vector variable, and then we will also look at an example. Now you will recall that for the bisection method, what we did is we guaranteed that there was a root on a particular interval. Suppose that you're aware that there is a unique local minimum on an interval from A0 to B0. We're going to develop a bracketed technique that attempts to reduce the width of this interval in a manner that is efficient. Now you will recall that for the bisection method, what we did is we guaranteed that there was a root on a particular interval. Suppose that you're aware that there is a unique local minimum on an interval from A0 to B0. We're going to develop a bracketed technique that attempts to reduce the width of this interval in a manner that is efficient. All right, the hook Jeeves method is as follows. Suppose we have a current approximation u sub k and a current step size h. What we'll do is we'll start with an initial delta u k, which is assigned the zero vector. We will then go through each of the n dimensions, starting with a first. So what we will do is we will evaluate the function at uk plus the current value of delta uk plus or minus h times the jth canonical vector. Now, having evaluated all three of these, if f sub negative one that is the value of the function stepping in the direction of negative h times the jth canonical vector, then we will update delta uk to reflect this new point at which a minimum is. Alternatively, if the step in the positive direction of the jth canonical vector is the least, we will once again update delta u sub k to move in this direction. We will do this with the first dimension, then the second, then the third, then the fourth, and so on. And at each step, if we find a direction that is better, we will continue to move, we will continue with that new point, not the original vector u sub k. Now, if after going through all n dimensions, if delta uk is still equal to the zero vector, then that means that the midpoint is the smallest of all the, one, all the two n other points we tested. Consequently, if h is small enough, we're finished. We have found an approximation of the minimum. Otherwise, we will reduce the value of h and we will return to that first step again. Now, if however, delta u sub k is not equal to zero, then uk plus delta uk has a smaller value than f at u sub k. All right, but we won't stop there. Instead, what we will do is we will then evaluate the value of the function at uk plus delta uk, then uk plus 
twice delta uk then and so on and so forth for successively larger values of n m we will continue to do so until we find a value such that the value of the function at f at uk plus m times delta uk is less than the next step in this case we will then assign uk plus 1 to be uk plus m times delta uk and we will once again return to that first step so to summarize the hook jeeves method and the strategy used therein first explore points around u sub k and find a delta u sub k that offers a move towards a minimum the best possible move of the points that you sampled and again we're only sampling a small subset of possible delta u sub k's now in the literature these are called exploratory moves so we sample around the current u sub k to see whether or not we can find one that is better now if no better point was found then either we are finished and we declare u sub k to be an acceptable solution or we try again in a smaller neighborhood now if we did find a better point in the neighborhood of u sub k then we use that direction to move towards we continue moving in that direction until we find a minimum in that particular direction and then we repeat the process again this process of moving in the direction that we found a better minimum in is called a pattern move so to summarize this as a problem solving technique this is actually a strategy that can be used in other searches not just minimization so we have an approximation of a solution and then we have a process of exploration one where we try to find a local improvement if an improvement is found we use the change to the approximation that gave us this approve this improvement to try to find an even better solution by continuing to move in that direction if no improvement is found then we either declare the current approximation to be the acceptable one or we try again with different searching criteria in our case we just reduced the step size or the value of h and we searched in, in a more local area of the current approximation all right let's look at an implementation of the hook jeeves algorithm we're going to return a pair the vector being the position at which the apparent minimum is and the value of the function at that point the parameters are the function that is to be minimized the initial approximation u the initial step size h two parameters indicating the constraints the step epsilon size and the absolute epsilon size and the maximum number of iterations we are willing to tolerate now we will get the dimension of the vector from the initial vector u assuming that that is correct we will then evaluate the function at the initial point and assign that to a variable min we will then have a loop that iterates a maximum of max iteration times and we will have exploratory moves a check of conditions and then pattern moves if we did not find an, a good approximation of the minimum we will then return the zero vector and not a number not a number indicating that we could not find an appropriate value all right let's look at the exploratory moves first we're going to store the current value of u the current vector 
and the minimum at this point in two variables, u0 and min0. We will then set a du or delta u vector equal to the zero vector. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go through each of the entries of the vector du, and we will try to change each entry by plus or minus h to see whether or not u plus this new du gives a smaller value, a better approximation of the minimum. So first, when we are at the jth entry, we will set the jth entry to be of the du vector to be negative h, and we will evaluate the function at u plus this du with negative h in the jth entry. We'll then set the jth entry to be equal to h, and then once again, evaluate the function at u plus du, now with the jth entry equal to h. Now, if we're looking for a minimum, so if adding or having h in the jth entry gives a smaller value than either having zero or negative h in the jth entry, then we will update the minimum. Now, notice that du already has h in the jth entry, so we don't have to do anything else. However, if the function evaluated at u plus du with negative h in the jth entry, then we will update du to reflect this and store the value in min. Finally, if neither plus or minus h in the jth entry gives us a smaller value, we will simply reset the jth entry of du to be equal to zero. Now we're going to do this for each of the j entries or the dimensional or entries of the vector du. At the end of this, we will then update u by adding to it du and the value at this point will be what is currently stored in the value min. Okay, next, let's check the conditions. If no change gave a better approximation of the minimum, that is, the norm of du is equal to zero, then we're going to check. If our current value of h is less than the step epsilon size, then we're done. We're going to return u and the minimum at this point as the best approximation of the minimum. However, if h is too large, we'll just divide h by 2 and continue. That means we will return to the start of the for loop without executing any statements after this. All right. Next, we're going to go on to the pattern moves. So we have found a du that makes a change. We're now going to continue moving in this direction. Now remember that the, that the previous approximation and the minimum at that are stored in u0 and min0. However, we're going to carry on going forward. So while k is less than max iteration, so each time we execute this loop, we'll add one to max iterations as we are technically doing more work. And we do not want to do too much work as that may mean no solution may actually exist. So what we will do is we will calculate u plus du again and evaluate the function at this point and assign that to f min. Now, if f min is less than our current value of min, we will then add du to u and store this new minimum value. However, if this is not true, this means we've more or less come to the end in this direction, and so we will break out of this loop. All right, so having broken out of this loop, we will check again to make sure that k is less than max iterations, because if k equals max iterations, we've already done too much work anyway. Uh, so we'll, we will not execute this 
conditional if k equals max iterations. However, if everything's okay, we will check if the distance between our previous minimum u0 and the current value at which the minimum occurs u, if that's less than the step size and the difference between our previous approximation of the minimum and our current approximation of the minimum is less than the absolute epsilon size, then we're done and we will return the current value of u and the minimum at this point. If this is not true, then we will simply go over the same loop again. Notice that h has not changed because, well, there may not yet be a need to change h as going in a different direction may actually move us in a better approximation. Here's a very nice example that shows this hook Jeeves method in action. This is from the Wikipedia page, and this graphic was created by Guillaume Jacquinot. As you can see, we evaluate the functions at plus or minus h for each of the canonical directions. And then we move in the direction of maximum increase. Once we cannot move any further, we divide h by 2 and try again and until h is sufficiently small. Following this topic, you now understand the hook Jeeves method for finding a minimum. And you are aware that this is an example of a more general means of solving a problem that has first an exploratory set of moves, and then once a direction is found, a pattern set of moves that moves hopefully towards an optimal solution. You've seen an implementation of this in C++, and you have seen an example from the Wikipedia page. Here are the references, acknowledgements, the colophon, and a disclaimer. Cheers.